to the stage for her third Lakeside World Championship final, a twice Winmore World Masters champion. The current holder of 13 world ranking titles, she's the reigning British Open champion, the Dark Destroyer, Dieter Hello everybody, Michael Harkins here with Dark Players Nashville and today we have a very, 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 very special guest in the one and only Dita Art of Darts Hedman. How's it going, Dita? I'm good, thank you, Michael. <laughs> so we, um, you yeah, know, a little bit of what's going on as you're already aware of, we've got um, the exhibition coming up next year. Um, I tell you, there's been a lot of excitement for... For Dieter, the name Dieter has just got everyone excited, even the males. See, see. <laughs> so, um, unfortunately, I did tell the males, though, that you are bringing hubby with them. So, but I think they're just more excited for the darts. I think you've been uh, an absolute great ambassador for women's darts. A true, true legend of the game. How do you feel about coming out here and meeting some of these people? And just, just, because you've, you've always been, you know, I've always known you through just the normal stuff like county and super leagues and stuff like that and you're just you know another person that just plays darts that works full time but at, at the same time you're a hero to, to a lot of people so you know just give us a little bit about that oh my you know darts i've always loved enjoy playing we have to say i'm a hero to some people <laughs> i don't can't get that <laughs> but it's great um it's like anything that you want to achieve. You have something in your mind and you think, I want to get to that level. Yeah. And you just work hard at it. And it's all I ever did. Just work hard at it. You know, um, oh. and you've got to want to do it. Definitely. And I just love playing the game in any shape or form. So and yeah, I don't really think about it. Every time I play, as I said, I just try to enjoy and just once it's done, it's done. And I just, yeah, just move on. And, and it's, it's amazing, really, because like for me, the women's game has always been there. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. Like, you know, the middle, uh, the middle sex, the county A, county B women has, has always been there. Mm. Um, but it's only really sort of the last... I would say last five to ten years, it's just sort of exploded. Um, you know, where there's just a lot more money involved now. The women, I mean, the women's average has has just gone up to just a completely new level. Um, what, what, how did that all change? What was the... Well, I think the minute we had the media exposure, because... All through the years, there's been very good ladies player, but the media has never been there. But the moment when the BBC started to show the ladies game live and all the other TV channel from the BDO, that was like the World Championship and all the other darts, then women out there could see, oh, I wouldn't mind some of that. So they put this a little bit more effort in and a little bit more time. Yeah. So if they, their husband is good, they will practice with them to get better. But it's like any sport, I take football, it was always alongside the men, but nobody really yeah. knew much about it. But then the media came in and now it's exploded. Yeah. Golf, cricket. To be fair, every sport that you can think of that the men play that is highlighted, there is a ladies section yes. there. So once the media gets hold of it, then it takes off and then 
all the women are, they think, yes, we could do this, and then they could make it a career. And that's where, in the darts, because it's, as I said, the media come in, and the PDC as well, that's given that platform. And what Fallon did last year, yeah. Mikuru, Lisa, you know, and every, most women out there who see it think, oh my God, I would like some of that. So to get there, they put in the time in. So and it's beginning to pay off. Big time, big and, time. Yeah, and I think in two, three years time, there's going to be another explosion. Yeah. You know, like so. So yeah, I can't wait to see that. Yeah. So, as I said, I think it's the media has a big part to play in all the sports that we do. See now, especially for darts, I think in particular yeah. darts because you know with other sports, like especially in America, it's it's more of a you know you've got more physical sports. And I guess golf, you could put in there, but darts in particular, you know, there's no excuse in a way. Like a lot of people say, you know, you always hear that common <laughs> thing where oh, well, men are just stronger and here, but with darts, there really I'm isn't. Good. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I'm gonna stop you there. Uh, go on. <laughs> I'm gonna stop you there. You're married, ain't you? I am. <laughs> and the one thing I will always say when they say there is no reason why we shouldn't be as good as a man, I will just say to you once a month, once a month, our brain, our bodies, <laughs> if you men could change with us then you could understand why we are okay. not as good as a man. Because I can tell you, when playing the circuit, Anastasia, Fallon, Lisa, Bo, young talent coming, all of them, I will say to you, they won't play so well this week. And then next couple of weeks, then I know they can beat anybody. Okay. Because I'm going from it, from a, me as a person, because I know how I, bad I was, the headaches I used to get, the stomach cramps I used to get. You didn't want to get out of bed some of times, some of us. Not everybody, but it's just that one moment there. That little period that, of time each month. Yeah. But the rest of it, there is no physicality, yeah. as you say, but I do think a woman brain is all over the place if you have kids you're thinking of the kids and of course the husband because they're still a big kid so <laughs> do you know what I mean so, so yeah huh, well that but, goes for us I mean we're still thinking of the kids and the wife I mean <laughs> we're, we're thinking as a big kid as the wife as what can we get away with this week you know exactly uh, should I come home on time or should I just sneak another hour so yeah we're still thinking <laughs> Yes, and the woman is thinking, where is he? I'm gonna, yeah. So I rest my case. <laughs> All right, that's totally, that's totally. I mean, like today, like just before we made this call, I was watching the um, the PDC. I watched uh, Lisa play Rob Cross in the first, is it the first round or second round? I'm not too sure. And she beat Rob Cross six five. Um, you know, Rob Cross, former world champion now, number five in the world. Yeah. It was great. It's just, just great to see that. Like, oh, well, yeah, but. Again, it's like any sport. You don't know what's going on in their personal life, which can affect you. Yes. You know, they, with playing darts, I, I just feel your mind has to be clear. Mm -hmm. And no obstacle that distracts you, things like that. It's a very few of us that can have that moment where you can just do the sport that you love without any disruption or anything like that. And you can stay at it for a level path, you know, for and you can stay at the top for a little while, but then you always come start coming down. For some reason, you sometimes when you keep winning and you keep winning, it's a habit. But then the minute you start losing, then your brains are thinking, what am I doing wrong? You start twinkling with this, changing that. But nothing has changed as such, it's just... Mentalities. Yeah. You know, it, it's a crazy, crazy um Sport. thing. Yeah, it is. And if you sit down and start analysing it, oh my good God, it messes your mind up. Yes, it does. It really does. So uh, for me, I try not to think about it. 
And, and, and that would lead us into the perfect next question, really, because I, when I grew up, that's saying you, you hit the nail on the head there, is, is it's not the dart, it's not the, the, the you know, it's, it's you, it's that mental capacity of why, is, why am I not playing well anymore? Like, what's happened? What's, why is, and then, every, you know, and so many people do, I mean, God, growing up in Fulham and playing there, you know, Jimmy Hodge would just throw his darts in the in the river in the, in the Thames you know, after a bad match. You know, <laughs> off with the darts and that would be it. I'm getting a new set and it's like, wow. All right, now back in the day, darts weren't as expensive yeah. as they are now. Oh no, they not. <laughs> so I'm not sure if he would do that now, but you could pick up a set for five pound and just throw it again. But nowadays, I mean, it, it's going to cost you a pretty penny <laughs> to do that. But it is. It's so. What would yeah. your best advice be to that player? Because there's actually a good friend of mine who is actually going for it now. He he's been playing really good, and he's gonna know who he is. I won't say his name, but he's been playing really good, and he's just come off a little bit of form, and now yeah. he's talking to me as if to you know because he knows I'm a fanatic of the game and I I love the sport as much and I've been around it since a baby. Um, and he's asked me, you know, what do I do? Like, and I've just said, you just got to stick with it. You got to, don't change your darts. He wants to sort of maybe he's considering changing his setup, his stance. What would you? What would the best advice you could give someone like that that is going through that that period? What well, more practice or what, what would you say? No, sometimes it's not more practice at all. Do you know, as you get older, thing does change. Your body changes, even the stance. Because sometimes when I play and the way I stand, I'll get a bit of a backache. So your brain will take a different mindset on it and you're not really focusing. Really, the game of darts is all about focusing. Mm -hmm. And if you can get on that board, just look at it and just try to focus on where you're throwing it, I just think it will all come back together because there's a reason why you were that good once. So unless you've broken a finger or you're in some kind of ache or pain, and as you say, your brain is thinking too much. Yeah. It's stop thinking. It's hard to say stop thinking because even I say it, I know you don't stop thinking. And if you have a little spare time and you do want to change a little setup, then try some different flights. They might fl fly through the air a little bit better than the one you used to use. Mm -hmm. Because I know that's what I did with my setup. I used to use um, the one with the metal head on the top, or aluminum on the top. Yeah, but yeah. with the L-style one, they're long and still similar, but the flights are very thin. And the shape is a little bit smaller than the normal shape yeah. so for me yeah it's something like that and you might find something that's worked better than the other but it's, it's match play are you talking like the standard there's it's like a smaller standard no, you got standard flights you see i'll show you you see mine yeah they're a little bit smaller than I think the one you've got. Yeah. They're still the same shape, but mine, you see. I've got to show mine now. Style. Yeah. So mine is just a little bit here. Yeah. Okay. It's not quite so wide. And now going on to that, because that is the new thing, you know, you've got L style, you've got, um, there's so many now. You've got like the Robson flights. Now, they're, obviously, it's a lot harder material, so it's a little bit more weight. A lot of people, there's always that question of, does it change your throw? Like, does it change the way they fly? Is it... What's the benefit of, of that sort well, of flight? It can do. It can do. If you hold the darts at the front, then you need that weight at the front. Mm -hmm. And if you hold it in the middle, then you kind of need the weight... At the back. In the middle. But if some people grip the whole length of the dart, so you kind of want the weight to be distributed the full length of the darts. So it's a balancing act, really. Yeah, yeah. So everybody holds the darts slightly different. So they probably want somebody had the analyzing your throw and deciding like, okay, that's how you throw. So you need the weight there or you need the weight there or there. And I think that's what it is. I mean, some people, so many people do it now. Like, this is something I never saw 20 years ago, but, like, people now will stand there and video themselves throwing, and they'll say, like, yeah, you yeah. know. And, you know, sometimes for me, it's like, just just go up 
as to you're most comfortable. But don't overthink where it is because you're never going to be able to maintain that. I mean, just imagine how many darts you're throwing. You've got to throw comfortable for first and foremost. Oh, God, yeah. And as you say, we don't all throw the same way. Because yeah. even myself playing all these years, I have a practice and I do half an hour and I look at them thinking, I'm not throwing the same way. Yeah. Something might change. I might go, yeah. The arm it, tires. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And especially if you're thinking about things, then then yeah, it, it's yeah. all got to. To me, I think if you can clear your mind and then just see the dartboard, don't. One of the things as well, don't ever think who your opponent is. Yes. Because whether they're good, not so good, or in the middle. You, to me, that's. I think that's how. I'm talking for me personally, is how I've got through whatever I play. I don't think about my opponent. I just see you have three darts. I have three darts. If you're good enough on the day to beat me, then so be it. If I'm not good enough to beat you, then. But I don't ever think about who am I playing. And my overall, he used to look at the draw and he goes to me, "If you win that, you get." And I used to say to him, "Shut up." <laughs> I said, all I want you to do is look at the draw, tell me what time and what board I'm on. And whoever turns up, turns up. That's all I need to know. And personally, <laughs> right, that right there is saying, yeah. what I would say, is the best advice you could ever give because I know so many people when that draw's coming out, they're all running over there and it's like, yeah. don't focus on who you get. Don't, like no. some people say, I'm going to get as far as, I want to get as far as the 16 because that's my routine. Do yeah. not do that. No. It's, no. It's, you're asking for trouble. You really are. Well, yeah, you can go on your ass first game, can't you? Exactly. No, he, he used to do that. We used to argue so much. And in the end, he kind of got it now. He just tells me what board I'm on and what time. And that's, that's, that's all I, as I say, that's all I need to know. And that's all I do. Well, um, I mean, and especially for someone like you as well, that level... I mean, really, it's the other way around. Everyone's looking at the board and sort of, oh no, it's Dita, you know, it's 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 one of those things now. So you got that, you got that, you know, you can work, you know, it's other people have to worry about you, Dita. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said to him. Let them worry about me. I won't worry about them. Exactly. Now, one of the things I've always, like, I've always been a big fan of you, Dita. Um, you know, always, obviously, you know, just growing up, with it, and one of the things that's always impressed me with you is you're you're such a gracious loser. Like you, when you lose a match, you still have a smile. You you know like you still you know congratulate your opponent. You, you still keep the game like a gentleman's game. The way you know the way it's always been back in the day, and now you see so many like sore losers and just the reactions you get. I, I hate to see that. Really. The yes, tears. I am I'm exactly the same. And believe you me, nobody likes to lose. I know. Whatever they and sometimes that uh, exterior that you see, that I smile, give them a hug. But when I get home, I say I kick the cat. <laughs> but you won't ever see that. Kind of, go, that's me. But well, if somebody plays really well and beats you, then congratulate them. Yeah. There's nothing wrong in being humble, because you know, it doesn't matter how high you get. There is a way down. Yes. So to me, I give them the respect they give me. And I always but say, if they don't give me that respect. Then they don't believe you me. They will get it back. Then you kick but, their cat. <laughs> yeah. But no, there's nothing wrong in being gracious in winning and being humble when you lose. Nothing wrong. Well, with and that. that was the other side of it. And also, when you win, you're just so you know. You know, to your opponent, like your opponent, it's hard for your opponent to really just walk off because if they do, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, obviously it's very different in the women's game as well, because you don't actually see much of that in the women's side, personally. Sorry? <laughs> you haven't seen On that. TV, that is. I mean, it's been very, like, you know, obviously the men's side, you know, you've got your, your, your girl in prices, your Adrian, like, you've all seen it in the uh, Peter Manley, whereas with the women... I have not yet. I've seen it once. I have seen it once. Don't say any names. <laughs> but, I mean, obviously, I know it happens off the circuit, you know, but... 
No, it is there. It is there in the ladies' game. There is quite a few. I could name a few, but I won't. Really? Really? <laughs> but yeah, normally I would just like go really. <laughs> Yeah, but, I mean, I could, well, it's a competitive game. It's a one-on-one, you know. Competitive game, but some people are just... Too much. I just... Nothing wrong with celebrating. Definitely. Nothing wrong with saying, come on. But it's the manner in how it's done. Exactly. You know, if you do it in the person's face, or what, there's no need to scream so loud. You can still say, come on, get in. Yeah, I know it is. And, and, and that's spot on, once again. It, it's the manner. Like, yeah. if you're doing it to yourself and you're walking away, that's fine. If, if you're deliberately yeah. turning around to sort of rub it in, yeah. obviously, we don't want to see that. We, we really don't. No, that's, no not, that's, that's, that's not sportsmanship. No. But these days, as you were saying, where the money is coming, everyone is thinking, well, if I can put my opponent off without being too obvious, why not? Because yeah. once you start thinking that, idiot it's taking yourself off your game isn't it because you're thinking no oh, i want to trip him up or something like that so you've taken yourself out of your game well and it's such a mental game I've, you've seen it, it so is. many times where people will try to slow someone's game down and it, all it does is yeah. actually affect your own game yes it does and it you, does you, you're your own worst enemy then i mean mm -hmm. so i mean i've been told because lisa throws very very quick doesn't she yeah and I remember someone saying to me, slow her down because you're going faster and faster, you know, speed. So I said to them at the time, I said, I can't do that because I will put myself off because I'm thinking I'm doing that. I said, I will play my game. Yeah. And I did actually step back because I did felt I was going fast. So I stopped myself and then I played at my rate. So if she wants to run to the hockey, fine, but I will go at my speed. And sometimes, if you're playing somebody really, really quick, you just count to a number. That's I good for you. Yeah. And then you work from that. So you're always at that level all the time. I'm trying to give away too much of my um, wow. information. Don't worry. There's, there's only going to be about 100 people that watch this. So. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it's going to be 100 that you're going to be competing with, you know, exactly. come, come April. <laughs> but they've got a lot of practice to do if they're going to, uh, you know, take the stage. Um, let's go a little bit on the history then. So you have been playing darts for, well... How long? When did you start the game? Let's, let's talk about when you started. How did you get into the game? Oh, all right. When I started the game, I came to England night, the 31st of January, 1973, in this little short girly dress. I was nearly 14. Well, I'd just turned 13. I would be 14 that year, and I was so cold. And when I saw the snow, I just ran out in it and just all this ice. And I just put my face in it because of obviously in Jamaica, ice, we don't see like that. Normally you get a box of ice and you dig a hole in the ground, put it in to keep it from melting. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I'm one of seven. Six of us was born in Jamaica, one was born in the UK. So when my first, the three eldest siblings were in England, then the next three came. And two of my brothers were already established playing in the pubs and and so forth. And one of my brother had a dartboard up at his own. So when he used to go and play, I used to babysit and him and his wife just go out and have a good time. And when they came home, I used to have a game of double in, double up 301. And I would never leave until I could win a leg. <laughs> and he say, Dieter, go home, you got school. We'll play a game tomorrow. And that's how it really started. So when he's come home from work, rest up, and I finish my old school work, I would go down and we'd have a game of darts in his house. Well, in the kitchen, where it was. And then when I was old enough to go into the pub, to be fair, I went in the pub the minute I left school. <laughs> just 16, because being so tall, I look older than I was. And then on a... Especially on a Sunday, after we've done all the housework and stuff, mum gets dinner ready, we used to go to the pub, put your name up on the board and chalk and then play. And really, that's how it came about in 
playing the game. And I just enjoy playing so much. The pub that I was in, they decided to form a darts league. And they asked me if I would join, and I did that. And then obviously scouting, people see you, and then they'll ask you, would you play for my team? And I did that, because I used to work normal hours. Yeah. I used to finish like 4.30, 7.30 to 4.30. So I had the time to go and play darts at night. And yeah, and that's how I got into the game. And then I just fell in love with it. So and from pub darts, I'm, I'm assuming... Pub darts, and then I was asked to join the Super League. I said Super League from there. And then from there, I got picked to play county. And I will tell you my first county experience. I could not stand straight. I was shaking so much. I had a skirt on, and if you can just imagine the wind fluttering my, <laughs> I had to stand up straight. Oh, everything just fell out. I, I don't think I won my game. I just about hit the board. It was silly, isn't it? Yeah. You play darts all this time, and then you go county, and all these people are shouting. It's terrifying. It's but different. still, anyway, got picked to play county and then after about two or three years in getting established I started to do some competition that I found out just traveling and I love to travel anyway and then I got picked for England and then really the rest is history mm. I just used to get in the car at the weekend finish work and god I used to drive like six seven hours to now, tournament do you, do you still play county or Yes, I play. Um, I don't actually play for Essex now because after I took that time out from the BDO for all those years and I came back, they had some criteria mm -hmm. that you had to play a certain amount. Well, working nights, I couldn't do that. Okay. So I play for a county called Essex, which I register for the team. So what they do when one of the girls is going to be on holiday, they let me know so I can book the night off. Okay. And I've been there for 10 years since I returned. Oh. I've been playing for Oxford now for 10 years. Okay. And that, I mean, that is like the bread and butter of the game. That's what a lot of people say in America. You know, when I came out here, it was like I was missing, you know, it was like, oh, it's, mm. yeah, you, you had that one night a week pub, you know, obviously the bars yeah. and stuff, but then that was it, you know, where, where I was used to playing, you know, Monday night, you know, London Super League, Tuesday night, Essex Super League, Wednesday night, yeah. Surrey Super League. And it was just every day was intense. You were playing top quality players week, yeah. you know, every day. Yeah, um, because you want to be good. And when you want to be good, you play against the better players. Definitely. And that brings your game up, which is what I did. I mean, I, as, you, as we said earlier on, I used to travel to London. And I used to meet my friend Jill Bales. If you know Jill Bales, she used to be captain of the London... A county. She used to be part of the London County with Marilyn Smithers. She's still yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just trying to think as well. Like there, there was a really good London woman. Who, the Trisha Wright was always an exception. Oh, Trisha Wright. Yeah, she's sorry. She plays for sorry. Linda Batten. Yeah. I don't know if you remember a girl called Mandy Solomon. Yeah, I know Mandy. Yeah. yeah, they're all still around. Mandy's playing again. She stopped. She came back. But yeah, um, I used to travel to London to where Jill lived and then she would, I'd get in her car and we would go to all the Super League on a Thursday night. I used to get home like half two in the morning and then I was up at six for work. And I, I tell you, <laughs> when I played, it was the yeah. first woman I played on Super League was Trisha Wright. And mm. she absolutely kicked my ass. Just going to say that. <laughs> and She's been playing the dog. That's when I woke up and thought, wow. Because I went in there a little bit arrogant. I'm going to, uh, I'll be a bit, I was young. I was confident. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I've drawn a woman. It should be easy. Yeah. She absolutely wiped the floor. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, and I didn't know who she was at the time. Obviously, she. No, 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 no. Um, and probably a lot of the viewers here won't know Trisha Wright. But Trisha Wright is. It was pretty Trisha. much on top of her game as well. I mean, oh yeah, Trisha busy. Trisha normally goes to the Vegas. Yeah, they normally go to Las Vegas in January. I was say um, probably well the yeah. women. I know for sure the women would know Trisha, but I'm you know I'm more referring to yeah, the men. She normally does that. But yeah, but one of the thing is as well, which is still a bit of a stigma, mm -hmm. 
if a man ate to lose to a woman, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how good they are because they get the ribbing, don't they? And it's still even to this day. They hate to be beaten. I was just going to say, like, when I lost to Trisha, it wasn't the fact that I lost to a woman. It was the shit I got from my team for the whole rest of that season. That's why you've got that, because then you just never forget that moment. No. (laughs) And even though I said to my team, well, she probably would have beaten all of you anyway. And she, yeah, but she beat you. And it's like... Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, okay. And that's what I'm saying. Even though she played so well, it's still that stigma of losing to a woman and they ripped the hell out of you. (laughs) They still do that now. Yeah. But yeah, but... So, I mean, so the next thing I want to go on to then is... A lot, even today, a lot of the top pros still work full-time or part-time. Um, and a lot of people don't realise this. It's really probably the only, what, top 16 PDC that can probably afford to, to work, uh, not work. But, you know, you still got players throwing, you know, you know 30, 100 averages that are still working full-time. Uh, yourself, you have always worked full-time and you've hit the, okay. the top levels of your game. So my next question is here, because a lot of people say, well, you know, I work full time. It's like, yeah, so does everyone else. So what I would say is how do you squeeze, how did you achieve your success whilst working full time? What was your practice sessions, your routines? Uh, What advice could you give to people out there that, that, you know, that can't leave their job? How do they, you know, how do you get rid of that excuse? All right. Well, as I said, in my day job, when I finish normal hours, because I'm fortunate, I always say I'm fortunate because I don't have children. So I only have to look after myself. But when I work normal hours, I had a dartboard put up at home. So I would practice before I went out. And you know, I used to get there a little bit early before everybody so I could get a little practice. But weekends, I would have a friend And we would just go to the pub for for about three, four hours, have a drink and practice. Especially when I go to County and we just practice. But now that I work nights, the mail centre I work in, they had a little spare room. It's like a recreation room with some gaming machine, a table tennis. And I asked if I could have a dartboard put up. Once I started playing again, and they said, yeah, no problem. Because I explained to them what I did, where I was, and where I wanted to get to again. So they um, said, okay. So I put an artboard up at work. And in my lunch, I would practice for half an hour on the board. And what would you do in that practice session? Anything particular? Well, I practice, really. I start three darts at the double all the way around. I go backwards, I go 20, 19, all the way around that way to the bullseye. And I just have three. It's like uh, those threes just waking my arm up. Mm -hmm. Then the next practice is my first dart at double top. If I miss double top, I go double 10. If I miss double 10, I go double five. And if I miss it, I go back. And that first start has to hit the double. Or if the two are outside, then you get it with your third. Yeah. And I do that all the way around again, 20, 19. You know? So if I hit 90 and I go three, double eight, I practice the finish with the three darts. And then the third one, I do two for the 20, one for the double. And I have to hit them before I move on with that one dart. So two singles, one double? Yeah. So okay. I'll go... Two for the 21, double one, with the last one, double two, and all the way down to bullseye. Okay. And that's my practice. But so sometimes not much scoring, yeah, then. So it's mainly double practice. Yeah, I do a lot of double, because when you're playing, you're going for the 20s all the time, ain't you? Yeah. Yeah, you go for the 20 all the time, so I practice on my doubles, and I practice my finishing. Because if you go for double 19, then you're at 19, I practice get the three because the all those darts count and so so i do that and then bob anderson have one where it's 27 you start off with 20 oh yeah yeah so, we know that guy yeah. yeah yeah so i do that 
But when I am at a competition, I always have one person that we go and do one to one. Mm -hmm. So, in, and we have to do it in six starts. Okay. And then we just go, we don't jump, we just go one to one, one, two, two, and see if we can get to one. Now, if you miss with the six starts, do you go back one? No, you oh. don't. Because in a normal game, if That's you miss, it. you won't go back. Do You're you? out. <laughs> so everything I play, I play as if I am playing a that, game. Yeah, that's clever, actually. Yeah. So it's that. not just throwing the darts at the board. I am playing as if I'm playing a game. So you're yeah. always connecting yourself to playing a game. So my doubles is the same. Okay. I'm just losing yeah. you a little bit with the light there. I'm not sure. That's your light. <laughs> that, no, 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 you, 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 you're getting darker. Oh, hold on. <laughs> How is that? Now you're getting too bright. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'll come back in a minute. I'll put... Yeah, that's better. My light's awful, but I can't help it. I've got a huge window and I, I don't even have anything no, no. to cover it. It's getting dark here now. Oh, really? What's it, four o'clock over there, isn't it? Oh, God, yeah, it's dark outside. Yeah. Um, so next, then, let's talk about a lot of questions because I always get these questions, uh, sponsorships and stuff like that. A lot of people think, you know, a sponsored player is, is obviously no need, no, it doesn't have to work anymore and stuff like that, which is completely a misconception again. Oh, God, yeah. So let's let's go into that. So how does sponsorships work in general, and and not just not not focusing on your particular sponsorship, but just in general, what 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 does a normally what if someone approaches you with a sponsorship, what should you be looking out for? What should you be asking for in, in realities? With the sponsorship, most sponsors want to know what you have done. To be fair. But if you just genuinely want to just go out and to, to make it into the ranking, sometimes your local shop business, you could say to them, I'm going to a tournament in so-and-so, can you just sponsor me for that one tournament? You can get up so many different bits of sponsorship just to help you out with... Entry fees you know, and with, stuff. Yeah, it's, it's just helping you with the expense. Mm -hmm. Because until... Well, really, until you achieve anything, because I, to be fair, all that I achieved all that time is only when I came back that I had sponsorship because I was with Target when I came back, then 180 now. Yeah. And they'll style approach me for the flights. But really, um, it's just your local business. You just say to them what you're doing, what you, where you would like to go achieve and try it that way. Because a lot of people here sort of say, oh, well, they're with Target now, so they must be on like 40,000 a year and they're just there to play <laughs> darts. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was my exact response. I said, oh, let's just sort of feel Taylor. I said, maybe, maybe. Oh, my good God. I said, but I don't even think Phil Taylor gets that. <laughs> I would never be working. Do you know, I will tell you, because I'm not with Target anymore, do you know all they offer, all I got out of Target for each year was just a thousand pound. Yeah. Uh, and it didn't now cover anything because I went everywhere. But for me, because I did so well, that money I just had a kitty which went in. But obviously your darts, your equipment and everything like that, I got free. Yeah. So I didn't have to spend money out on that. But the darts company do not want to part with money. Nah. <laughs> so it is very difficult in that way. But it's always better to have a lot of little bits mm -hmm. than one big one because they will all add up especially nowadays but we, I mean, we were talking prior to this about just the expense of flights darts and stems to today oh, God. you know like i remember back in the day you'd get a little little packet from you know your county shop your little flights yeah. and, a, and a new set of darts and you know, 10 10 pound later you're set you know you've got a set for the whole year and nowadays, you know, like especially with like L flight now, they're obviously a more, you know, textured. They're more, so oh, much God. more quality goes into it now, and they do break, and you do need backup sets in here, and and, and it does actually become an expense. And I was trying to say, you know, just just having that that as an income, it saves you a lot of money. You know, it's oh yeah, oh yes, yeah, um, oh, definitely. 
because sometimes you know that that's just a sponsor you know we're not going to give you any money we're just going to make no, sure for the whole yeah. year you're not going to spend any money on data supplies and you know oh. and uh yeah people's like oh so they don't like you know get 40 50 like, oh. <laughs> no so, oh good god i think I the only if, person that probably has got that I know what Fallon did last year. She's got quite a lot of sponsors, but it's what she's done. So you kind of yeah. And it's a one. Yeah. It's one female. Like you know, a lot of people forget yeah. that you know, it, it, you you got to put a lot of work and and, and in some respects get and have a little bit of luck on the way. Oh, good God, yes. To to get to that, I was like, you know, lot like, and and you know, like for me that you know, you've got the big five. You've got yourself. You've got. Um, yeah. And this isn't, but you know what? I'm not even going to say names because there's so many, like even Eileen, um, Wynn Stanley. I oh, mean, God, yeah. There's just so many. I, I mean, you hear the top five, but I don't like to say the top five. One of my favourites as well, um, always watching, she's a youngster, was Casey Gallagher. You know, she just always impressed me. And Oh, Casey has got such a talent, but I think Casey needs to sort her out. I was just going to say, and that's the thing with the youth of today, because you see it, um, like, even on the, the sort of the men, the boys sort of thing, yeah. you've got a lot more young players coming through. You've got, like, Chris Dovey and stuff. And oh, I, God, yes. Callum Reese. There's another young lad, um, Nathan Potter. Obviously, um, Boom Boom. You know, the young... That's right. The, the, the Dutch guy? No, no, he's a... Funny enough, he hasn't done a lot of late. I'm oh, trying to think of the Dutch guy, Tur Turgel, the, the, the little super super kid. Justin Turgel, yes, yeah. yes, I know. Yeah, he won the World Championship a couple of times, didn't he? But, see, a lot of people forget that they... You know, it's, it's especially hard for them because they're still going through maturity, they're at school... Oh. You know, real life, real life hasn't kicked in yet, like bills and family and... <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> I mean, one of the things I was... Uh, I'm trying to forget now, but who's the, the lad from Isle of Wight? I forget his name. Where's the pink top? Uh, had a real great first year. Oh. Uh, what's his name? Oh, that's horrible. There's so many now, I forget. Uh, he always yeah, wears the pink top. Yeah. But anyway, he had a great year. Um, and then he sort of dipped off since then. And then, uh, you know, people just forget that it's like sometimes, you know, with me, I, you know, I used to play darts and I, I went on the circuit for a little bit. I, I didn't achieve much, but I tried it. I, you know, mm. I gave it a go. And, and you know, there's I, out that whole year, you know, I won a tournament. And that was the only tournament I've ever won. And it was just one of those days, and that's what I was trying to explain to someone, it's just one of those days where you're just hot. You, you just, no matter what you do, you're just feeling it. Yes. And you yes. just, and then that, sometimes that can, like, since then, 20 years later, that's just never come back again. And you know, that's always wound me up, because I'm thinking, how did I, what did I do that day to get so hot? Yeah. And why can't I ever replicate it? You know, I still have my moments, but that day, just all day long, every game, I was just throwing so well, and... And I said, I said, that's just darts. Yeah, people just got to understand that is darts. Well, you know, one of the things I used to do in my early days, always put my headphones in and practice. Yeah. And I haven't, when I came back 2008, stroke nine, I haven't been doing that at all. So when we had the ladies challenge, the ladies series, I got there and I just plugged my headphones in put my phone in my pocket and obviously we all had to be in our little bubble so that was just myself Paul and another lady with us like you know the two meter and that's all I did I just plug in went on the board did my routine because I set myself a certain time yeah. to do it and that's what I did and once they said game on I just I really didn't think about anything. I didn't. Even, I honestly didn't even know who I was playing until when the names went up. Because with the PDC, you have to see where you're, what exactly. number, yeah. what game you were on, whether you were first, second, or third. And I just sat there, and Paul said, "You're up third. I think I was up each time, or I had to chalk." And yeah, and I just thought. 
that's where I was going wrong. Hmm. <laughs> a and, and not the t- go on. No, go on. Do I sure. No, I'm just going to say, and another time it just won't work. Yeah. But, but yeah. I see, and that's again different, you know, just different cultures as mm-hmm. well. Because like coming into it, I've got a few more questions. I'll let you go because I know you've been fantastic. Okay, no worries. Um, one of the things that I noticed from the UK to the US is, you know, in the UK, I did a lot of chalking. You know, I was always always chalking out here. You chalk your own games, which was something completely new to me. I've never done that. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. That, that was horrible. Uh, that took me yeah, two years to get to. Yeah. I think it takes you out your game. Yeah. Um, but then obviously now we've got the introduction of Dark Connect. Um, yeah. What's your thoughts on that and stuff? Dark Connect, do you know what? I was a little bit afraid to, to chalk on it. Mm-hmm. But at the challenge tour, I had to use it. It's brilliant. And I'm saying it's brilliant because... As I said, I'm not a techno. You make a mistake, it's easy to correct. It is easy. Yeah. And if I can do it, you ask, if, ask my oh boy, how idiot I am with computers and things. And I did it, and it is it is really good. Now, I would I would it, definitely recommend Art Connect. Now, does it affect? Do you think for me? One, I love it too. Um, I'm setting up the leagues. I'm going to get mm-hmm. set up Dark Connect with it all. Now, the only issue I have with it, and I don't think it's much of an issue, but the only scare you could say is: does it affect counting at all? Is it just too easy having it there for you? Well, yes, it is easy to count. It is very easy to count. Uh, of course. As you say, computer takes away you even using your brain in adding up. Mm. But then you need to know how to take away. Yes. Isn't it? Because you can bang on those treble twenties, treble nineteens or wherever you throw them, but when you get to that finish, it's learning to count. So uh, so yeah, when it comes to computer age, it does take away you using your brain. It does, yeah. Now, yeah. Some people say that's better because then I don't have to, that's something I don't have to worry about, you know, it's there. But yeah, then at yeah. the same time, for me, I think it also disturbs rhythm because having to stop and think is also a yeah. you know, distraction. But so, so it's like anybody who's starting out in learning to finish because you can get those cards with all the finishing in the ways to go. I know there is a lot of our um, new way you can go, but. Yeah. When you watch me play, I still play the old way because old it's the way you've been brought up. It's like on ninety one, they all now go for the twenty five. Mm-hmm. It's great if you hit it, but if you're outside, me, I still go for my fifty one because in my head, I hit that fifty one. I have two darts. Yes, that that has definitely been a big argument with commentary that you've seen, and I, I, I agree with you on that one. I think. Going the 25 route, you are, yes, percentage-wise, you're giving yourself that percentage shot. Yeah, but at the yeah. same time, if you know, you should be able to be confident enough to still go the old way. And if you do hit that triple, like you said, you've got two clean darts. I mean, yeah, because if you're a little bit nervous and you hit that triple and you throw the first one, and it's still, you can compose yourself. And another thing as well that people forget is even if you hit the 17, you've still got two darts at a finish. I mean, it's not as if, you know, I, I completely understand 99, for instance. You know, it's a free dart out. If you miss, you're done. But, yeah, you yeah. know, with like 91, like you say, you know, I just don't see the point in it personally. If you hit the 17, you're still on another finish. Just go that way. You've still got two darts. But I, get, yeah. I, I do understand both ways. But personally, I'm old school and I, I stick with my way. Yeah I, yeah, I definitely stick to the old way. I mean, 92, you're throwing out the treble 20 all the time. So why do you want to go 25? Exactly. You know what I mean? You're throwing there. But yeah, I try to stick with the old way in what's best for me. And then one last question, put you on the spot here a little bit. As a great, you know, as you know, ambassador and stuff, what, what sort of name would you give an up-and-coming female that you, you just see going, doing big things in the future? A lot of people won't know the up-and-coming talent in the, women, in, in the women's side. So yeah. is there anyone out there that people should be just looking out for? You know, who's, who's the next best thing? Who's the next, you know, you, Trina, Lisa? Because obviously you've got Fallon, but she's already done it. And, you know, I'm oh, talking... The next best thing 
is a young lady called Bo Greaves. Okay. And I, I, know, I know Bo. She, she is an exceptional she, Because I play pairs with her. As I did play pairs with Fallon before she um, um, made it big. I also had Casey with me at my county. Paul and I used to took her with us. Learn her, teach her the ropes, learn her, teach her the ropes and that. I mean, she knows it anyway. But she did county with us for a season. And now I play pairs with Bo Greaves and... If that girl talent stays as it is, she's only 16. So as we were saying, she's still going through that change. <laughs> but she doesn't look a 16-year-old. She doesn't, actually. She looks very, uh, from what I've seen of Bo, she, she looks very professional. She's very... She, oh, she could teach some of the professional a few things. But she's just a lovely girl and an absolute awesome talent. Okay, well, there you have it from Dita herself. Bo Greaves is a name you women need to be careful about. Well, you men, shall I say. <laughs> oh, men and women. Cause she's bashing them up as well. I was just going to say. A, a few and she's already done a nine daughter. Oh, wow. That's, now, that is an achievement. Now, that, 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 there's a question for you. Have you ever done a nine daughter, Dita? No, done ten. ten. I've only ever done ten. What about and, even in practice and stuff like that? Do you, is that something? Well, not even in practice. See, uh, the other, I think last weekend I was practicing the way 180, 180, and my Paul just looked up and went, nine daughter, and uh, that's <laughs> it. Honestly, it's never, ah. it's never stopped. It wasn't even in the 20. <laughs> but no, no, she's, and the young lad I was thinking of, Leighton Bennett. Okay, yeah, it, yeah, uh, like, yeah I like, yeah, he seems to have, mind you, he's only 13, nearly 14, so very, yeah. there's a lot he cannot do, because the PDC um, youth is like 16, I think, for them, because obviously in, when you're younger, you need the child thing, whatever they do. Well, hopefully, so, yeah. hopefully once this COVID settles down, you know, obviously we've got the WDF, um, coming they're, through. They're working very, very hard behind you. And as you know, I'm on the on the board of the WDF as well. And everything that's been set to take off, it, it's just been put back. So, and that's so great think, because you know that is the that is the grassroots, and people need to remember that you know you, you're not going to get there without starting here. You, you don't oh, just God, jump God. there. Grassroots is just as important. Yes, I get it on the money side of things, but, you know, darts isn't something you just wake up, pick up, and off you go with an eye no. darter and stuff. And, and also, in, in like any sport, I will say, you need to be enjoying it. If you're not enjoying it and you're just doing it just for the sake of doing it, then you might as well forget it. And that was another fear. That's definitely another fear with the money and the sort of, especially in the men's game, a lot of people think, you know, like, you know, yeah. Phil Taylor achieved what he did, but he did it, it was his job, you know, it was. Yeah. And that's why he was so successful for so long. And yeah. nowadays you see the likes of, you know, like even this year, you see Michael Van Gerwen dropping off. Now that could be the COVID, who knows. But you yeah, also... But then he, yeah, but then he's also got a young family and things like that. So... I just think once he adjusts everything, you know, because nobody knows his private life, what's exactly. going on, you know. So once everything is adjusted, he probably, he's still young enough to, you know, and his bad darts is my good darts. <laughs> well, so, uh, yeah. But I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, when you come up three, four million in a, in a space of six, seven years, I mean, you could retire realistically. You could just say, you know, and that's where the importance of the love of the game. And, and a lot of people don't understand that with darts, as it is the love. A lot of people don't do it for the money. A lot of people just do it because well, they God, love no. the game. Well, you could do it for the money, let's be honest. I mean, we've all been there and done that, and that's just felt miserable. Don't quit your job is, is the best advice I could do because I did it and wow. Oh, definitely, definitely. But I mean, it, there's nothing wrong if you can afford to do that, if you want to just go and play. Because you do have some people that will say, okay, I'm going to take two, three years because they can afford to do that and see where they can achieve. Yeah. Because like Dave Evans, he's doing very well at the moment. Yeah. And I think... When I spoke to him, he said he sat down with his wife and she said, well, if that's what you want to do, okay. We'll take two, three years 
and go for it. Give it your full, you know, give it your all. And if you achieve what you want to achieve, great. If you don't, then at least you've tried. You know, so so yeah. And if you don't, go and get a full time job and start supporting us again. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's why I never gave mine up. <laughs> that's, that's what that's what my wife said. So she goes, but she only gave me a year. That this was my ex, my ex wife. She, she gave me a year, and she was like, "Yeah, you could do it for a year." And then there was not much success. She was like, "Well, now you can get your full time job and just give darts up and play for play yeah. local again." I was like, "Yeah, I guess." <laughs> but even though about Michael, a year goes so quick. It does a year you just find it? Although you play darts locally and whatever, when you go out there on the circuit. It's a different kettle of fish when you start to travel. So really, a year is just learning that side. And I, I and my year was mainly I didn't even do like what people do now. Like my year was just going through local tournaments, all from like yeah, London yeah. to Newcastle to Manchester. Yeah. I did go a few times to Holland to some of their events, but you know yeah. nowadays you've got like Romania, you've got Spain. Oh God, yeah. it's everywhere it's, now. It's, it's, it, it takes it out of you, all that travelling. It really, really does. And it's, it's just stress. like really doing a job. It's stressful it's as like, well. Really, yeah, and that's the other side, isn't it? The stress level. But... You're away from family. I mean, it does. Yeah. It takes a lot away from you. All right, well, Dia, I really appreciate this conversation. Um, this is something we've been, I've been trying to do. I'm trying to sort of really encourage darts, especially in Nashville, but in Tennessee, in America in general. It, it's yeah. already big out here, but I just feel it could just be so much bigger. There's so much great talent. Um, so I really appreciate everything you've told us. You know, you've, you've, you've given us your secrets of your, your practice routine. So. <laughs> Now everybody's gonna beat me. <laughs> but we, we we really look forward to you coming out in uh, April May. Um, a lot of us, including myself, very excited to just 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 watch you play and just enjoy the the game like you enjoy it really because you do make oh, the game yes. easy um, and you do make it with a smile on your face which uh, you just don't see much I'm, anymore. I'm looking forward to it. You know, hopefully all this pandemic lifts and. We can all do what we really do enjoy doing in our spare time. I would say spare time. Definitely. I, I know my overall can't wait. Definitely. <laughs> I bet.